right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Last Call Podcast, Week Seven Edition. Uh, my name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me tonight is Dave Eddy. How's it going, man? It's going, dude. Another Sunday, uh, almost in the books. Yeah, it's, it was a it was a weird one, man. Um, starting tonight with this Eagles Cowboys game, I, I was not expecting a trouncing by the Cowboys. Um, it is bad. Like Eagles offensive line cannot stop anybody, and Wentz is just like fighting for his life back there, unfortunately, and they can't get anything going. So I can only imagine how drunk Bird is right now. <laughs> he's yeah. he's got to be about twelve shots in. Yeah. Oh man, it's it's brutal to be an Eagles fan tonight, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's get to these games. We'll start with uh another game that was equally as awful, uh, but for different reasons. 49ers and Redskins. 49ers take this one nine to nothing. There's there's literally nothing to see here. I mean, this game was a washout. Um it you know, they were doing, it was like slip and slide out there. It was just gross, and nobody could get anything going. I guess the only thing sort of offensively worthwhile was Adrian Peterson ran for 81 yards. I mean, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo threw the ball 21 times. Keenum threw the ball 12 times. I mean, the, both teams were just like, no, nope, we're not throwing the ball today. So, sucks for t- people who used McLaurin. Uh, I was one of them. I live in D.C. I wasn't even thinking about how hard it was raining outside. <laughs> I was like, oh, you mean that sucks for football? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, so, yeah, that that sucks. I, I mean, anything to add here with this one? I, I think we can just nah, I think I think I think you hit it with the AP getting some uh, surprise yardage. Yeah. All right, Jags and Bengals here. Jags 27, Bengals 17. Fournette. 131 yards rushing, no touchdowns again, man. This is like a this is a theme for him. He's just not fine at the end zone this this year. Um, I mean, what what else is there to take from the Jag side here? No, nah, I mean it was kind of a bummer they had early in the game. They, you know, they were down to the goal line and Fournette got stuffed on a on a fourth and goal from like the one yard line. Yeah. Um, I, I you kind of needed him. I mean, the yardage is nice, but you know, mm-hmm. the, the touchdowns are, are really where you make your money. So it's nice to see him put up some yards. That was kind of expected. Um, but you kind of really were hoping for, you know, a, a two touchdown game as well from him. Yeah, I was I was hoping for a lot more from him going against this Bengals defense, but unfortunately nothing going here. On the Bengals side, I mean it's it's ugly, dude. It's really bad. You know, we've talked about this I feel like week in, week out. Um Mixon ran the ball ten times for two yards i mean he salvaged his day sort of with a, a touchdown reception um but mixon's starting to be a benchable option in my opinion yeah for sure um I'm said that last my, week <laughs> yeah um i'm kicking myself for not starting lat murray or chase edmonds over him in one of the leagues that i was able to snag them but that had been a ballsy call though i mean murray right? murray, I mean, murray i guess would have been fine um edmonds, i mean i guess yeah, we'll get to murray later rough. but i but yeah I, if you would have started edmonds you'd have been batshit crazy it would have <laughs> worked out but you'd have been crazy yeah pretty much um we'll get to that game soon uh so vikings lions the next game here uh, 42 Vikes, Lions 30. Uh, this was ugly. Uh, I streamed the Lions defense this week because I had the Eagles defense, and they're both equally as bad, so I guess I didn't lose should've, anything. Should have started uh, nobody. <laughs> pretty much. I got negative three from the Lions. Woo. Yeah, I bet. Um, I mean, Cousins, dude, It's the whole offense was really good today, actually. Um. But Cousins, you know, 337 and four touchdowns. I mean, so much for the uh, – they're not passing the ball, right? It's it's They're just lighting it up now. I mean, Cook, yeah. Cook even got his, home 42 and two. Yeah, so, they did pretty much whatever they wanted today, and that was with Thielen going out pretty early right. in the game after he caught a touchdown pass. Yeah, he um, had, And they didn't really lose a beat. Yeah, he hurt his hamstring. It looked like it could have been way worse, actually, because um, you know, he, he hit hard into that wall in that back of the end zone, 
when he caught the touchdown and slid all the way through. And, you know, at first it was like, oh, he's holding his hand, he's holding his shoulder yeah. or something, right? He didn't quite know what was going on. And now they're saying it's a hamstring that he's probably going to be fine for Thursday, but we'll see. It's a that's short quick, week for them. Quick turnaround, exactly. That's yeah, hard. Yeah, it's a quick turnaround. That's going to be tough for a hamstring to heal. Um, on the Lions side here, I mean, you, Marvin Jones, man, that was a Marvin Jones show. Uh, I know a lot of people who like just decided to finally be like, nah, this is, you know, I'm not starting Jones this week against the Vikings defense, blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> four touchdowns, just absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, the hell this is like Marvin Jones does not this, but he does, you know, he has these like one or two blow up weeks every year. It feels like, and it, but he's hard to trust. Yeah. They come so randomly. Like, I mean, in retrospect, I, I suppose not that you could see this coming, but whenever, uh, you know, an opposing team has got a, a really good corner, like, you know, Xavier Rhodes, mm -hmm. those are usually the times where I start to think about Marvin Jones and think, okay, well, if they're going to shut Galladay down, you know, th this could be one of those games for Jones. And I, I mean, Bert had called it in our in our Balls D podcast, and I mean, if I had to start a lion this week that you know wasn't Stafford, you know, a skill position guy, it probably would have been Jones. Um, I guess Hawkinson maybe, but Jones probably would have been the guy. But mm -hmm. I was confident enough that I, you know, I, I talked Bert out of starting him. So now Bert hates me. But <laughs> such is, such is life. Already? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, probably a little bit. Yeah, he's more vocal about it. Uh... Nah, dude, that's um maybe that's just adding to his twelve shots. Mm. Um, yeah, and on the, uh, they have uh, injury news as well. Carryon Johnson was injured in this game. I don't. I actually, um, what was the injury? I didn't have it written down for some reason. Um, you're making me have a brain fart. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, awesome. yeah, he he basically didn't really play, but I mean, they didn't really miss him, honestly. Um. I mean, I don't think they were going to run the ball worth a shit anyways. And Ty Johnson came in and did fine. Uh, McKissick was more explosive than, than carry on typically is anyways. So, the knee I mean, injury. yeah, that's so, probably how it makes. Yeah, no, know. that makes sense. Yeah, so, so it, I don't know. I don't think it got. affects the Lions offense going forward, honestly, as, as sad as that might sound. Yeah, stinks. I'm, one of my leagues, I lost him and Matt Ryan in the exact in the same matchup and uh, – I'm getting destroyed in that one, so <laughs> as to be expected. All right, next game here. Where are my notes? Rams. There we go. Yeah, Rams. We got um, Rams and the Falcons. Um, Rams 37, Falcons 10. I, I mean, look, I think everybody picked the Rams to win, but I think we thought the Falcons were going to pull the Falcons and, like, make it close at the end because that's what they do right they just get garbage points feels like but they were they couldn't get anything going um and then ryan gets hurt in the fourth quarter there and you know game over for sure um on the ram side here not i mean not a ton offensively honestly either from like anybody uh i guess Gurley 18 for 41 caught a pass caught a touchdown pass uh interestingly enough He's back this week. Malcolm Brown's out, but he still, you know, he got the majority of the touches, but he's still 18-11 split with uh, with Henderson. So that's, you know, pretty interesting there, I think. what What's your kind of take from this game? I mean, I think it's 100% intentional, you know, uh, that they don't want to overdo things, you know. Um, I think they plan on making the playoffs and, you know, making a playoff run, so – I think that you're going to continue to just see them, you know, give them a, an easy workload and, and try to maintain them through the through the year and, you know, have them healthy for, for when they need them in the playoffs. So, you know, for fantasy purposes, unless Brown and Henderson are both out, and even then, you know, they're, I still wouldn't say he would probably get every touch, but um, I, I think it's going to, you know, be more of the same. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um so, like I said, on the on the Falcon side, not much going there. You know, Julio uh, did pretty well, even against Jalen Ramsey, six for ninety three. But nobody did anything else. Uh, I mean, this was just a bad offensive game, defensive game, everything. The Falcons were terrible today. So, 
Um, you got anything? Any takeaways? No, nah, I mean, I, I mean, you pretty much nailed it with, you know, Falcons really didn't, you know, have that second half push because they were so far down. Um, I mean, it was pretty close in the first half, and once they started to get behind, they, they just couldn't play catch-up. Um, so it was the first time that that offense kind of really just remained stagnant. Yep. Uh, Dolphins, Bills. This one was uh, fairly interesting. The Bills were actually losing going into the fourth quarter and then blew up. <laughs> like, um, they So the, the Dolphins lose 21-31 to the Bills. Um Fitzpatrick, man, almost almost made this happen. Like, like nothing sexy on the on the Dolphins side, but you know he two eighty two and one. I mean, nobody's starting any of the Dolphins unless you're totally desperate. Um, I think the only interesting note fantasy wise, I would say, is like if you're truly desperate at running back, like Mark Walton is, I think clearly the guy here now. I mean, he got fourteen carries to. Uh, I'm pulling up the box score now. Drake, six. Ballage, three. Whoever Matt Hack is, one. Um, sounds like a punter. <laughs> um, so, oh, it is. That's funny. <laughs> I had a fake, have a fake punt. Yeah, they did have a fake punt. Uh, that's hilarious. I was like, it sounds like a punter. And it was. Um, yeah, so, I mean, he's clearly the guy, but, I mean, his offense is bad. But, I mean, hey, 66 yards against this Bills defense, ain't, ain't nothing to shake a stick at, man. He, that's pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, I know that Drake is on the trade block, so yeah. I don't know if, if that had a little bit to do with it where they're just like, why fuck around and get him hurt? Or if it's more they, they like Walton better. But um, I guess I assume I depending on how – Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess so. I mean, they're – I mean, I guess they'll probably trade just about anyone right now for a pick. So, um, I mean, I guess if depending on how deep your league is, you know, if you if Walton's sitting there on the waivers, I imagine you could do a heck of a lot worse. Yeah, I mean, desperation by week play, right? Yeah, um, for sure. Why not? Uh, on the Bills side, uh, Josh Allen, 202, two touchdowns, rushed for 32 yards. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's bigger or if John Brown getting, you know, Five for eighty-three and a touchdown is bigger, but I mean, really nothing great coming out of this game either. Uh, for from the from the Bills side, fantasy wise. No, I'd say if anything, you know, this kind of solidifies for me exactly what we can expect from from Josh Allen from from this point forward. Um, I mean, if this wasn't the week that he was going to kind of, you know, fantasy wise, really have a you know a a great game, then I don't know that it's going to happen. So. Not again. Not that he's a bad option necessarily, because um, those rushing yards are are extremely valuable from mm-hmm. uh, a quarterback. But you know, if you're going to get 202 and two touchdowns from him this week, you know, I, I don't think you're going to necessarily ever get a 350 and you know three or four touchdown game. Yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, you're going to get the random games that is going to happen, but it, you can't predict it with him yeah because so this was this was the week you know yeah i had him really highly ranked and yeah, um me too i believe i actually got a question should i start aaron Rodgers or should i start Mm-mm. josh allen and i went mm, josh allen and whoops. boy was i wrong and yeah, so whoops. on to our next game raiders and packers <laughs> packers win 42 24 and i'm gonna start with the packers aaron Rodgers was on fire today dude he it was incredible 429, five touchdowns, and he rushed for one. Perfect passer rating. I believe I saw something that's like the first time a Packer ever finished a game with a perfect passer rating. That's almost um, hard to believe that he's never done that before. I, I, I would question that. Or Favre has never done it. Like, I would question that he's never done it. That no, sounds unbelievable. I, I was I was watching – Um, it was Red Zone, and they like cut over to the, 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 like the coach's post – thing uh post game like speech in the locker room and he said it and then like they showed up the stat nobody's ever done it for the packers including aaron Rodgers, which is incredible uh but he, he did it today and he was awesome and it's everything everybody ever hoped for when they drafted aaron Rodgers as the second or third quarterback in their leagues this year um yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, missing pretty much all of the receivers, too. Um, Allison was out. Adams is still out. Um, MVS, 
played and had a good game because he had a 74 yard touchdown, but he had two receptions. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know how healthy he was. He just happened to get a big, big play. Um, Jones and Williams caught a touchdown each. So, I mean, just kind of spreading the ball around to everybody. Um, I mean, yeah, this was the Aaron Rodgers show, though. For him, you know, it, do we think that like, maybe this is just gonna like? Obviously, not this is gonna continue, but could this success continue going forward? I mean, I know we've talked before on the show that he's kind of turned into a an average fantasy quarterback. We know he's good, but for fantasy this year. He's just been he's been very average, and you know, do you think this could be more of what we're going to see going forward instead of what we had been seeing? I mean, it's it's hard to say no necessarily because you're talking about Aaron Rodgers. It's it's not like we're talking about you know Kirk Cousins having you know a little hot stretch, right? But I I would say more than likely no. Um, I, I think what we've seen from him is more likely what we're going to get. Uh, you know, they've got two running backs that they like. Um, you know, they're, they're definitely trying to run the ball more. Is he going to have a game like this now and again against literally anybody? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but do I think he's a, you know, top three quarterback um, going forward? I, I do not. Yeah, I don't think so either. I'd be hard pressed to say that he's even like top five. Top That's six. what I'm saying. Like, like yeah. I, I don't know if he's going to be even that high. Um, the one thing I will say is that I think the Packers defense dominance that they had the first few games is not going to, is not there anymore. So teams have figured out this defense a little bit and they're putting up some points. So Rogers is going to have to pass a little bit more. Now today they were ahead a bunch. So I'm surprised that they passed as much as they did. Um, but that being said, it worked out for Rogers owners for sure on the Raiders side. They put up some good numbers. Uh, Carr had a decent game. Jacobs 124, just no touchdown. Unfortunately, Waller, the big story, man, finally got in the end zone. Uh, he's had some big weeks this week, seven for one, twenty six and two. Should have had a third. Um, I mean, th- Waller is, I mean, he's balling out this year, man. And, and, you know, there was some talk late in the preseason about him. And, you know, he was getting snatched up late in drafts in a, in a few that I was in, and especially best balls, like really late. Um, but I don't think anybody saw this coming. Yeah, no, I mean, this is a little bit out of hand. Um, I mean, it also helps whenever, you know, the top receiver was out. And so he kind of has became, well, at least this week, you know, the de facto number one receiver. But, I mean, it's, it's not a fluke. Um, no. If anything, it's a fluke that he hadn't scored prior to this week. Yeah, so, much. I mean, I, I think, God, I think I would have said this after week three maybe on the Balls D podcast that, I mean, he's he's a guy now, you know. He's he's a top five weekly option at tight end at worst. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's good. Starting with confidence every single week, uh, mm-hmm. for damn sure. So, moving on to the next game here, we got Texans and Colts. Uh, Colts took this one thirty to twenty three, which honestly that kind of surprised me. I, I thought the Texans were going to come in. They've they've been hot, um, but they just they didn't look. They, they didn't have it today, man. Watson was getting rattled through a couple picks. Um, did throw over 300, but just, you know, it, he was missing some guys. I will say Hopkins finally got got a game, 9 for 106 and a touch. Um, you know, he's been struggling. I th- I want to say Fuller went out with a hamstring yeah, injury. Yeah, he, he went out early. Yeah, so that plays a I big think, part in it. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, for... For Hopkins owners, yeah, Fuller not being on the field helps his stats big time. Um, but what what's your takeaway here from the from the Texans side? No, I mean I think you pretty much hit on it. The the only thing that I guess would be a little disappointing, I think a lot of it has to go to game flow. Is we had seen back to back weeks of of Hyde with twenty carries, and he was down to twelve this week. Yep. Uh, again, you know, get, unless you're you know Leonard Fournette or Ezekiel Elliott or Chris Carson, you know. Twenty carries a week on average is is not really happening in the NFL anymore. So it's not necessarily a bad thing because that's just you know kind of the game flow for them. But yep. um, it, it was nice to have seen him getting those you know carries in back to back weeks. Yeah, on the Colts side here, uh, Brissett had himself a game three twenty six and four touchdowns. Um, the running game wasn't really much here, and then uh, in in the receiving. 
Pascal, I think I said that right. Uh, yeah. Six for 106 and two touchdowns. Um, Hilton and Ebron got a touchdown too. So, you know, those owners are happy. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that not a whole lot of people started Pascal. Um, not even in DFS. So, <laughs> um, so kind of wasted fantasy points per se. But, uh, you know, and, and I don't think I'm going out to the waiver wire and rushing out to pick him up by any means. I think this, you know, this could be just chalked up to one of those like fluky games. Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. Um, I mean, early in the day, um, whenever um, Edmonds was going off, um, we were looking up his percentage of ownership in DFS, and I was trying to look up Haskell's as well, but I couldn't actually find a lineup that he was in. Um, so I, I had to have to imagine it was, you know, a one of those less than one percent. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it was less than one percent. I don't know what it was, but it, I'm, I would bet you it was less than one. That's a good guess. I mean, Marvin Jones was like two point four, and Edmonds was like one nine six or something. So Pascal was much less than that. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Edmonds, Cardinals, Giants, Cardinals win twenty seven twenty one. Um, get right to it, Edmonds. Um, the the surprise of the day. Uh, David Johnson was announced that he was going to play, so everybody swapped out Edmonds. Right. Everybody. Um, I actually, I got multiple questions on Twitter about Edmonds and told everybody but one person to bench him <laughs> because his other option was like, I forget who the other the other guy's option. I forget was like. It was definitely nobody good. And I was like, oh, Edmonds has been okay with DJ out there. You know, he's better than the, this other guy you have. Um, but <laughs> was not expecting 126 yards and three touchdowns. That's for sure. Um, I mean, unless David Johnson's out, I don't think we're ever going to be able to expect that again. I mean. No, I mean, 20, 27 carries. Like, that's, like, that's up there, man. Like, that's, you know what I mean? It's not like he had just – you know, 12 carries and just broke a, you know, a couple big runs or something. I mean, 27 carries is, is taking the ball, man. So yeah, that's not going to happen again. Even if he was a lead back, that might not happen again, but you know, him and Johnson are very similar. Um, I mean, you know, if, if you have, if you have it's I mean, you never hope that somebody gets hurt or something, but you know, that's going to be the way that he's going to make his way into your lineup. I don't know that you can trust him necessarily in a flex whenever Johnson's back, but I guess he could prove us wrong. I mean, it's had two really good weeks in a row. Yeah. I mean, you know, it could be, it could be kind of the scenario that we've got in, in LA, right. Where the chargers are playing, they're able to use both Mel Gordon and Eckler. Yeah. You know, it could be one of those. offense, you know, that offense just goes, 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 goes so fast. They get so many plays. Um, So I guess, I, I guess, I guess my point would be, he wouldn't be like, a flex option that you would really be excited to play each week. I mean, I'm not saying no. he wouldn't be playable, but he I wouldn't agree. be a guy you would go out and trade for and say, Hey, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to trade whoever for, you know, Edmonds. Cause you know, I want to be able to put in my flex every week. I guess that's more, more luck lands. What I mean, he's, he's definitely going to be playable, but I don't think he would be a, a weekly starter. No, no, I, I agree. I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, giant side. It, it wasn't good. I mean, I guess the, the takeaway here is, is Barkley played um, 18 for 72 in a touch. So, you know, you're not – it wasn't an awesome game by any means for, you know, going against the Cardinals. You were hoping for way more from him. Um, and we got a we got a scare in the middle of the game. He, uh, he got tackled at one point, like, around his ankle, came up hobbling a little bit, got – I guess just got retaped and then went back, back, went back out there. But, you know, that, that – that kind of tells me he's not 100 percent with that ankle, so that that worries me. Um, when I saw that, I went, "Oh no! Did they bring him back too early?" Yeah. Um, so I don't know what what's what's what are you thinking here with the Giants? Uh, I mean, DFS wise, I know that a lot of people you know were in on them just because of the matchup. Mm-hmm. Um, difference this week is Patrick Peterson was back, so um, Daniel Jones and the rest of the crew there. At, with the Giants aren't aren't anyone that I was playing. I didn't even have a share of Ingram either, even though he was like super chalk tight end. I 
And he did I terrible. didn't. I didn't. I didn't want anything to do with him either. So I mean, again, it's kind of like it's kind of like anything, I guess. You know, um, maybe like the Josh Allen situation where you know this is the week that you know Daniel Jones was going to really show you something, and not that he's been bad, but you know, I'm talking like you know must start fantasy quarterback. So he's just not there, and that's all right because yeah. he shouldn't be there. I don't, unless you're a Giants fan, I don't think anyone's super disappointed necessarily. I don't even um, think Giants just fans are disappointed. It yeah, it just Honestly. is what it is. So, um, yeah, you're, yeah, not, you're I mean, not getting that first week that he played the Redskins every week from him. Not yet. <laughs> so, uh, Chargers Titans next game here. Titans won this one twenty three to twenty. Um, Probably another shocker to me. I, I thought the Chargers were going to take this one, and they almost did. And blew it at the end. Um, yeah, kinda. Yeah, that was crazy. They had two what two touchdowns brought back on review there in the last thirty seconds or forty seconds or something. It was crazy. Um, Rivers did all right. Three twenty nine and two touchdowns. Um, you know, I, Eckler. So so Gordon had a touchdown, but was outplayed by Eckler big time. Um, Especially in the, in the receiving, especially in the receiving game, like nobody really got the ball rolling here, uh, running. But Eckler had seven receptions for 118 yards and a touchdown, um, which is actually almost a down week for him receiving the ball. Yeah, crazy? right. 19 God, catches, yeah. right? It's, that's crazy. Um, yeah, but I mean, he he did, you know he did great. You know, again, we we've said it before. Eckler is one of those guys that I think you do feel comfortable starting in your flex. Even, oh, absolutely. Even with Gordon there. Yeah, um, absolutely. And this is exactly why. This is this is the offense they run. The offensive line is terrible. They check down to Eckler a lot, and they have to. Um, and Henry was a, a, a big winner here too as well, and it's good to see him have a second good game back, six for 97. Uh, so, you know, we are needy for our tight ends, man. We, <laughs> it's been bad, so it's good to have another solid option here. Um, any, anything else with the Bolts? I mean, Mike Williams is going to go fucking bonkers soon. Um, <laughs> God, I, I, I thought that this was the week, honestly, because it didn't make sense necessarily, other than the fact that he's due. Um, you know, playing against the Titans, um, low ownership for DFS. I, I had a lot of shares of, of Mike, Mike Williams today, and it didn't pan out. But um, it's, it's kind of like the Will Fuller situation from a couple weeks ago. He, he's getting targets. And it's yeah, just a matter. Of, it's a matter of time. So um, maybe, maybe he next week, throwing them like thirty feet over his head. Well, or stop throwing them thirty feet to Eckler. I mean, you know, I, Eckler gets so many right. carry. I mean, it's just there's so many options. Or you know, obviously Keenan Allen is a superior receiver. Hunter Hunter Henry's back. Mm-hmm. They gotta hand the ball off to Gordon. They kind of have to hand the ball off a little bit to Eckler, but they gotta throw it to him a lot. So I mean, there's a lot of miles to feed there over are. there. There definitely are. Uh, on the Titans side here. Dude, I mean, Tannehill was was good. I mean, <laughs> it's uh, 23 of 29, 312 and two touchdowns. Yeah, he had a pick, but you'll take that any day from, from you know, Titans fans have been dying for a quarterback play like that for quite some time with Mariota back there. Um, you know, Henry, Henry got his. Corey Davis looked like he was actually an NFL receiver today. Like, you know, oh. six for 80 in a touch. Like, oh, man, maybe uh, maybe he actually is good. Maybe Mariota just blows. Yeah, I would say that's what happens, though, when you get an NFL quarterback. And, I mean, look look what look at Washington, you know. Um, I mean, McLaurin looks like a completely different receiver when Keenum's throwing the ball compared to when Haskins is out there. Right. Yep, absolutely. So, I mean, yeah, my, my takeaway really is just, you know, I want to see this offense – a couple more weeks with Tannehill back there, you know, Corey Davis is always like mega hyped. Right. And he just never Mm -hmm. pans out. And I want to see if maybe he actually is going to be, you know, like a wide receiver three or two, maybe. I mean, careful what you wish for it. I mean, don't, don't forget, we're talking about Ryan Tannehill. So the, you know, the, the dolphins are the worst team in football and he wasn't going to be their starting quarterback. So just, you know, just remember that. Didn't I'm he just also, saying. Didn't he also make the Pro Bowl one year, though? Oh, listen. You, you weren't there like seven going, injuries that year? But you still. going through guys that have made the Pro Bowl? I, I mean. know, but hey, he he did have some decent seasons with them. Then they the, the whole team just fell apart. Like, I don't truly think Tannehill was quite that bad. Now, I'm not saying he's good. Like, he's not, you know, he's not a, a real Pro Bowl quarterback in my head. 
But I think he is a better manager of the game than Mariota. I mean, I probably am too, but I don't think I'm going to go out and pick (laughs) myself up on the waiver wire, Um, you know. (laughs) Very true, very true. All right, Saints and Bears here. Uh, Saints win 36 to 25. Who who saw Bridgewater coming in and leading this team to an undefeated record after Breeze got hurt? Not me. No. Um, that is nuts. Um, that when's his contract up? Because if it's up this year, man, he he's gonna get paid. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I, it would make sense that he would have signed a, a short deal because I mean, Bridgewater is a starting quarterback in this league. He just, I mean, he got hurt badly, and oh, yeah, dude. I mean, like, you know, kind of, you know, they had to move on. Well, they didn't have to move on, but they did move on. Um, but man, Bridgewater three years ago was, you know, a franchise quarterback in the making. So, you know, you give him weapons like he has and didn't even have Kamara today. Um, you know, it's a good offense over there and it's, you know, not breeze level, but I mean, Bridgewater, Bridgewater is a legitimate NFL quarterback. Yeah. He's, he's been really good, man. Um, I can't find his contract info anywhere for some reason. I'm even on like pro football reference and I know it's on here. I just don't know where it is on the page, but uh, I am, I am very curious to see what his contract status is. Um, So I I keep Googling it. Yeah. He signed a, (laughs) he signed a one year, 7.25 million contract with them in March. Of well, there you go. He'll, uh, so, yeah, the he, Dolphins will sign him to play the first six or seven games of the season until they put Tua in there. I guess. Yeah. I I mean, that'd be pretty dumb of him to go to Miami, but I, I, think, he, I think there's lots of other landing spots somewhere. for him that he could go be a starting quarterback. Um, Latavius Murray, I think, is actually the bigger news here. It came yes. in for the Kamara. 27 rushes, 119 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, just balled out, dude. Um, now, obviously, when Kamara's there, Latavius Murray is not playable. But, obviously, you can put him in. I mean, this was against the Bears, too. I mean, I, yeah. again, like you, like you said earlier, like, I, I've got him. I mean, I played Mixon over both him and Edmonds. Yeah, I would have, too. Like, and, and I don't like Mixon, but it was like, no, I can't either. play Murray <laughs> against the Bears? No, thanks. Ugh. I'm on the same boat, man. 30, ah. 30 points on my bench. <laughs> All right. Uh, on the Bears side here, it was ugly. The stats look okay at the end as far as the passing. But, I mean, I think if you look at the 34 of 54 from Trubisky, that's the that's what is, like, telling. He was bad. Um, they Just had a you know, bunch of late yards, and they got a touchdown, two touchdowns late. Allen Robinson, you know, 10 catches for 87 and a touch because of it, too. Like, they were bad, just plain bad. Um, I mean. No, that offense is. They can't I mean, run the ball, dude. In, in, in a lot of years, that would be the worst offense in football. But you've got, you know, the the Redskins and the Dolphins, you know, dicking around. The so you, <laughs> Yeah, the Bengals. I mean, so. Yeah, that that team. I mean, even their defense, man. I mean, they they got tore up pretty good by the Saints today. I mean, did. to be honest, and like you look at that score and you go, "Oh man, 30, 36, 25, That wasn't a bad game, no. Oh, and the, the Saints, the Saints tore them up. They just got three touchdowns. That you know, if if it was well, I mean, the kickoff return was legit, but um, but those other two, you know, the two offensive touchdowns wouldn't have happened if that was a close game, or mm-hmm. you wouldn't think that they would. So yeah, that that offense literally put up a field goal. Is yeah, how I would look at it, and they were they were t- they were terrible, man. I mean, yeah. they didn't even try to run the ball. You know, they had five what five rushes. Cohen had three. Montgomery had two. Yeah, it was fifty four times, and they only got two hundred and fifty one yards out of it. it I, you know, I, I'm holding on to Montgomery in in one league just because were, you know running backs are so scares, and, and I just find it hard to believe that they just cannot figure out a way to get him the ball more, um, but. It's getting to the point where, man, if if I'm in desperate need for like bye week fill-ins, he might be my first drop. Damn, he's just yeah, doing man. nothing on my bench. He's just collecting cobwebs. Um, I started him one week and was like, nope, that's enough of that. Um, moving on to the last game here: Ravens thirty, Seahawks sixteen. I don't think anybody saw this game coming either. Um, you know, I I would have picked the Seahawks to win this game, especially at home. Yep. Um, but the Ravens took it to him, man. Um, you know, Jackson didn't put up like 
gaudy stats. In fact, if if anything, you know, his passing stats were bad. He was nine for twenty for a buck forty three. Yep. He just ran the ball well as usual. One hundred and sixteen and a touch. Um, but you know, because he didn't have a lot of passing yards, like really nobody in that receiving core did anything. Um, so. No, I mean, really nobody on that team did anything except for him. I mean, the defense had two touchdowns. So, right. I mean, that that's where, you know, it, I mean, it's another one where the score ended up being goofy because you, you see 30-16 and you go, oh, okay, well, you know, they put up some good points on offense. So, you know, good on good on Jackson and crew. Well, no, they had two scores on, on defense and offensively they really didn't do a whole lot, but neither did Seattle. You know, I mean, if, I wouldn't say it was necessarily as close as the score was, even though the score is deceiving nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right on with Seattle here. I mean, and your note here about them, just they weren't efficient. I mean, that's the thing we say every week is Seahawks win again. The efficiency killed, you know, the other team. I mean, Wilson was 20 for 41. That's, that's not, that's not, that's not Wilson. Um, You know, he's, (laughs) usually up there in like 60, 65% range, if not higher. He's just crazy efficient, crazy, you know, completion percentages. You know, Carson ran the ball 21 times, but only 65 yards. Just not much going on for this this team today, unfortunately. So, um, I don't know. No, it's, it was, it was yeah, it was a weird game. Um, it was a weird week, man. It was a weird week yeah, where we had some, like, monster games from some guys who you didn't really expect it from, you know, even including Aaron Rodgers, right? Like, I don't think anybody sure. gets That's that, fair. right? Um, right. And so, like, I'm seeing all my fantasy scores, you know, around Like, I'm seeing people win, like, 109 to, like, 80. I, I'm seeing scores in the 70s regularly across some of my leagues, and these are PPR leagues. Like that has a really low scoring week because the guys who balled out weren't started. Right. I mean, I mean, mean, Jones, nobody had a big game except for Rogers, I guess. I mean, Marvin Jones probably isn't a a starter. Cook, those guys good. Like if you got them, you probably did really well. Right. Um, But other than that, I mean like, you know, nobody, nobody started cousins. Nobody started Marvin Jones. And not a lot of people started Marvin Jones. He's probably higher on, and started in a lot, but just yeah. a lot of guys that just really nothing. Um, it's just, it was a weird one today. Um, you know, you kind of, you kind of chalked this up, you know, these are one of those weeks where like, if you lost, don't overreact. Don't, don't go crazy. Like don't go reacting to this week. This was just a strange week. You're it's going to, it's going to go right back to normal next week. I guarantee it. And your team's going to be fine. So, <laughs> I lost heard, bu- so if you lose your fantasy matchup, his name is Joe Bond. Um, you can reach him at Joe <laughs> at fantasy six pack dot net. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give out my email. <laughs> anyway. Um, is that even really it? That I was just making it up. Is that legitimately your email? No, it can't be. No, it's not. But anyway. I didn't think so. That's why it was. <laughs> um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, I, again, I, I just, I just wouldn't overreact to this week. I mean, like, you know, look, my, my Yahoo league, I'm in with, it was some friends of mine, you know, I lost Matt Ryan and, and carry on Johnson the same week, you know, I get less than, you know, seven points from the two of them combined. Yes. I clearly lost. Uh, so it's, it's just one of those, like, I'm just going to have to chalk it up to dumb luck. So, oh, well, all right, man, that's all I got. Uh, you got anything else to add? No, I'm just happy that the uh, referees didn't beat the Lions this week. They they allowed them to beat themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was not a pretty game. So I right. hope everybody had a good week and talk to you all next week. See you.